Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons. I'm all bundled up in my flannel, flannel shirt tonight. Don't worry, my heater's not broken. My wife, whom I love and adore, is going through menopause, so I'm not allowed to run the heater in the winter. So uh, we're going on our second or third winter here, where we're just basically freezing to death, me and the dogs. <laughs> uh, you can probably hear my my big dog Bella. She's in the background chewing on her bone, so hopefully that won't bother you too much. So. Let's get down to business, man. What are we doing in this video? I'm going to show you uh, how we put together uh, what we call boundary anno drawing. Okay, so at least part we're going to show you part of that process. So uh, this is for a land title survey that we're working on. And uh, what I've done is I've gone in and I've, I've in Carlson survey I went ahead and created the bearings and distance labels. Okay, just using the, the template we have set up for that. Okay, and I and I cover that. I cover how to do that. In another video, I'll try and remember to link to it in the comments. Okay, so what I want to show you in this video is kind of how we take this raw drawing with just these bearings and distance labels and turn it into an actual anno drawing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to come in here and we are going to attach our line work drawing as a reference. So in my shop, we keep those, uh, the line work and the annotation drawings are different different we keep those things in different drawings there's a reason we do that okay which I talk about in some other videos so we're gonna go ahead and insert our line work drawing here as an xref okay so here's our line work you can see we've got our bearings and distances going around okay so what we want to do now um, is we want to we want to polish up this annotation drawing okay so there's a number of steps to do that um, I'm not going to make you guys watch all of it I'll, I'll do the first part of each step so the video doesn't get too long but okay so the, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is we've got these bearings and distance labels in but but we need to uh, we need to dress these up okay and what I like to do we, we like to add a line ID okay so it's just an identifier a lot of people get upset about you know they get their they get all riled up to get their feathers ruffled. Um, so they're like, oh, you don't need a you don't need a line number if you're not don't have a line table. Uh, that's not true. I think it's very helpful to have um, a line an ID for each line segment and curve. Um, it makes it easier to um, do things like write legal descriptions and refer to different parts of different parts of the boundary during the map check process. And there's just there's a lot of good reasons to do it. Okay, so. I've already got, so in this particular survey, we've got, we're working at, at three different scales, 260 and 30. I've already got the 30 scale anno drawing mostly done. So uh, I've already labeled some lines. So my first line number, I'm gonna start here at L20, line 20. Okay, then at the end, we need to put, uh, we need to put the references, the distance references for this distance. So all of these, uh, we were able to hold record. So all of these are our records. So it's going to be C for calculated in R1. Okay, what that tells you is that we held the record here, right? I kept my calculation matched the record. Okay, so that's it. We're going to add the, the line number and then C in R1. Okay, so I'll do that again here. Okay, so this will be L21. Now, this particular distance here is an intermediate distance, okay, that's not in the deed. Um, and so it's not going to be it's not going to be on that on R1 it's going to be on a different map so we need to know what map that is okay so let's go figure out what map that is and I know I know which map I just got to find it okay so you do you do have to be checking your record references here as you move around okay so let's go take a look at this map so you can see what I'm talking about So we're going to go into research, filed survey maps, and then I got to try and remember what map this is. It's one of these newer ones, I'm pretty sure. Okay, it's not the Odell map, I don't think. So it's not that guy. It might be that 42. Uh, nope, this is it. Okay, so this is a map by GDR. So the R parcels down here. Okay, so this is a map to the north of us. So we've got this overall distance here of 992.88. Okay, so we should match that. Okay, so we're pretty close. 
So when we get that close, 200, I'm just gonna round that down. And now we gotta know what, what reference this is. So let's go, let's open up our sheet, our first sheet drawing and figure out what reference that is. Okay, so we've got um, This is uh, parcel map 58.1, I think. So right here's my references, 58.2, sorry, right here's R9. Okay, so we're gonna put R9 in here, so that distance comes from R9. Okay, so you, you do need to know how to read some boundary maps to figure out your distances. Okay, again, this distance here is also off of R9. Okay, it's 305 even. Okay. Oh, I got something going on there. Okay, so that's definitely not 305. So this, that's probably because this is a GIS parcel line, right? So I really shouldn't be showing that. Oh, you know what? That goes all the way over to this corner. This distance stops right here. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to make that a little more clear with some crow's feet. Okay, so this is only going to be calculated. I, I don't have a record for this on any of my maps. So I'm just going to put calculated there. There's not going to be any R's. Okay, and we're going to go all the way around and do that. Okay, I'm not going to make you guys watch as I do that, but we'll go ahead and, and do that. So let me do that. We're, we're going to go in. We're going to add the line number and the distance references here. Um, and then, then I'll show you guys the next step. All right, guys. So I got my uh, all my labels cleaned up here. Got the curve and line tags in. Added the distance references. So the next step in this anno drawing is to add our symbols. So we need to add our foul monument symbols and our search found nothing symbols. So those just get inserted as a block. I've already got them in the drawing. Um, so when you when you first insert them, if they're not in the drawing already, you are going to need to. Uh, you're going to need to scale them up by whatever your scale is. So, for example, this is a 60 scale drawing. So, we got to scale these up by 60. So, you can see it comes in really small because it comes in at a scale, one scale. So, we're going to scale that up by 60. Okay, so there's our found mon symbol. Okay, and we're going to drop this over. I know I found a monument here. Okay, and then everywhere we look for a monument but don't find one, we'll show a search found nothing. Okay, so um, as an example, up here at this corner, we have a search found nothing that's going to go here. Okay, so same thing. Come down here, grab the SFN block, and you can scale it up if you want before you insert. So we'll just put 16 there. Okay, then it'll come in at the right scale. Just drop that right over the corner so we didn't find that there. Uh, so that's, that's basically how you do the symbols. Okay, now I've already got those all dropped in so I can show you guys. So I've got all the symbols for the found lawns are over here. So we're gonna grab those. Okay, so I've got all my symbols in here now. We look for all these. These are all smoked by street improvements and utilities. Okay, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like after you get all your monuments in. There was a monument here we didn't find. Okay, didn't find these ones in the corners. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how we add these crow's feet. Let's do this real quick. Let's select all these and bring them to the front of the display order. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get these crow's feet in. We, we add crow's feet wherever we can, wherever it makes sense. Um, so we've got to add some more of those. Okay, so I'll come down here and show you how we do crow's feet. So the first thing you want to do, I've got a couple of these crow's feet just copied in over here. Um, this is just a line drawn with the polar command. We can use that as a rotation reference. So let's go ahead. Now these are too small for the crow's feet. So the next place I can add crow's feet is down here for this distance. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so because it's on the bottom of the line, I need to mirror this so it's the other direction. So I'm going to run the mirror command. Okay, and then I'll grab this crow's feet here, mirror along this line. Okay, so now 
I want to copy the actual crow's foot arrow and the reference line here, and we're going to drop it on the point. You can see there's a slight rotation there. So we're going to run the rotate command. We're going to rotate those two. We're going to use this as our base point and as our reference point. And we're going to grab the end of this line, use our near snap. Okay, now we've got the crow's foot properly oriented. We can delete that. Now, to do the second arrow, just to make it easy, once you get the first arrow in, you can draw a line perpendicular to the line that you're adding the crow's feet to, and then move that perpendicular line to the midpoint. Okay, and that allows you to use the mirror command again to get your second arrow in. So we're gonna mirror that arrow from here, and we're gonna keep the other entity. Okay, now we've got both arrows on the end of our line, and we're just gonna keep working our way around, okay? Um, I don't normally put crow's feet on here if I have the label label drug out, so I won't do that one. Okay, but we've got some here. So same principle. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Drop it on there. I'm going to rotate from here as our base point and our reference point. Grab the other end of the line for our reference, then run our near snap. Okay, and then we can del delete the reference line. So now we got that arrow in the right spot. Okay, and then we're going to use that same trick. We're going to go perpendicular, draw a line perpendicular to the line we're labeling. Going to move it to the midpoint. Okay, and then we're going to just mirror that crow's foot arrow with this perpendicular line as our mirror line keep the entities okay and we're just gonna work our way around the whole boundary as you can see I'm doing here I'm just working my way all the way around okay until we get crow's feet on all the appropriate distances now these are two curves we don't put crow's feet on our curves but what we will do is we'll put some little ticks on the curves here at this point so we'll go 60 because that's our whoop Sorry, I meant six. Since we're at a 60 scale drawing, we'll do a six foot tick. Okay, and what you want to do, pick the end point, then run your center command to go to the center of the curve. Okay, and then we're going to extend that. We're just trying to get a line that's perpendicular to the two curves there. We'll trim that out. Okay, and let's see. We can put this on the survey boundary text layer. Just be able to match properties here. Okay, so now we've got our curve there. This doesn't need crow's feet, it's too short. This doesn't need crow's feet because the label's drug out. Okay, and I'll keep working my way around. Okay, now on a, on a couple places here, we've got distances labeled on both sides of the line. That's where the crow's feet um, become really helpful. So I will, uh, I'll keep working on these crow's feet, and then when I get them uh, all done, I'll restart the video and show you guys what they look like. And turned this up. The Azure Dragon appears to be a standard rock hopper rigged with a shit ton of scopes, antenna, and sensor arrays. It's on the float. And okay, guys, I got the crow's feet in here, so I just want to show you what that looks like. So you can see on this line, we've got two distances here labeled on the top. And then down below, we've got this other set of crow's feet for the distance on the bottom. And then I've just gone around and added crow's feet on every distance where they will fit. I just noticed these need to get mirrored. <laughs> we need to mirror these. Let's do that real quick. So I got these pointed the wrong direction. So that's just that's what happens when you're watching Netflix while you draft. So let's fix that. Um, I also noticed if you're if I'm not careful, I don't get these um, crow's feet snapped to the right spot. No, it looks like it's okay. Okay, so got to do the same thing over here. So just make sure you get the crow's feet on the right side. Don't don't goof it up. Don't dork it up like I did. Okay, so go all the way around, come down here, got our curve tick, come back up. Okay, so our crow's feet are done. Okay, so the next thing I want to do 
is we're going to go ahead and add our uh, labels for our uh, found monuments and our search found nothings okay, in our property corners. And so we're just going to use a regular M leader to do that. Okay, so I'm going to copy this over and we're going to start down here. Okay, so every property corner will get a label, whether it's got a monument or an SFN or not. Okay, and so this is a found one inch outside diameter iron pipe. Okay, no tag or cap. Okay, and then we want to put the reference on there also. So that pipe comes off of this map right here. Okay. So this is uh, 4224, which is R9. Okay. Sorry, R8. Okay, so we're just going to put per R8. Okay, it's actually three quarters inch. So we've got our first label there. Oh, now I always like to put the M number. Okay, so to get the M number, we actually have to open the drawing that has the point numbers in it. So to do that, we are going to go open our boundary search drawing. That'll have our point numbers in it. Okay, so 515 is that point that we just labeled. So we're going to do M. 515 is how we do that. Okay, I feel like this might be a little big. So I'm gonna. Scoot, I'm gonna scoot that up a little bit. Uh, that might be as good as I can get it there. Okay. Okay, so that's our first one. Now, I typically just try and work in a Clock, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise clockwise direction, so I don't forget anything. Okay, so this one's a little different. This was an SFN. Okay, so if it's an SFN or there was no monument there in the record, um, then it gets a, uh, it just gets a PC number. Okay, and I didn't have anything there. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to use my next available uh, 1500 series number because I didn't have a number for this one. That's one we just looked for in the field. It was right in here. Okay, so to get that, I need to get that out of Carlson. Um, but for now, we're just going to put a placeholder in. So we're going to say PC1000. I'll fix it with the right number. Okay, and it, it was also... Okay, so now we didn't find anything here, so we're going to say SFN. But we're going to say that it was a three-quarter inch outside diameter iron pipe tagged RC three three zero three eight. So three three zero three eight, and then we're going to say per R eight. Okay, so. We always try to, on our SFNs, tell people what we were looking for, right? So we didn't find anything, but we were looking for three quarter inch outside diameter iron pipe tagged RCE 33038. Okay, so, uh, and I'll fix that PC number here in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna keep working our way around here. Okay, so up here at the corner, Okay, now our parcel wasn't mapped, so I know this monument didn't come from our parcel, so it's from another map. Let's see what this map shows here. Okay, so it shows uh, found five inch rebar per reference E. So let's go see what E is. E is book 12 of surveys at 58. Okay, so that was a five eighths rebar. Okay, so let's go find that record of survey. 1258. See if he set it. Okay, so this is the oldest survey here. So he set it. 
Okay, so let's see. Does it tell us what he said? 5 8 iron rod, tag LS2803. This guy's old. <laughs> LS2803. Okay, so so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So now this one has a number. So we didn't find it, but it has a search point number. Okay, it was 1516. So this is going to be PC1516. Okay, and it was SFN, and it was a, what was it, three-quarter inch? Five-eighths, okay. So we're going to say five-eighths rebar. All right, inch diameter rebar. Okay, and then it was tag. LS2308, I can't remember. LS2308. Close that map, I guess I did. LS two eight oh three. You can tell I'm dyslexic, huh? That was two eight oh three. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Okay, now we gotta figure out what our number this is. So I'll go back to sheet one. Okay, so that's R4, that record of survey, 1258 is R4. So we're gonna say per R4, so we didn't find anything. Um, but that's what we were looking for. Okay, so we're gonna keep working our way around. Okay, so now I've got this other one here. Okay, and what happened on, on a lot of these is there's a new fence, relatively new chain link fence that got put in and they smoked a bunch of these corners. Okay, so this corner is 1532. Okay, and it's gonna be on a different, yet another map. It was on a parcel map. Let's see, not this one, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. All right, so let's go back to the end here. Okay, so it's this map right here. So this guy set three by three quarter inch by 24 inch iron pipe tagged LS7823. Okay, and this is 58.2. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's get that number. So this is 1532. It's a PC number because we didn't find anything. Okay, so SFN. Okay, and this is a Three quarter inch outside diameter pipe. Can I? I don't know if was it tagged or stamped. Tagged. Okay, so tagged. LS seven eight two three. Okay, and it's per. We got to figure out what record it is. So that is what maps that. 58.2 is R9. So per R9. So we didn't find it. That's what we were looking for. Except that's not the right tag number. What is it? It's LS7823. So didn't find that guy. Again, I think it got smoked by the fence. Okay. <clears throat> then we come all the way across to this corner. So you guys see, I'm just gonna work my way around clockwise. Every corner is gonna get a label. Okay, now let's just, as an example, let's just, let me just show you how we do corners that don't have a label or that don't have a monument. So th these all these lines down here were D lines uh, created in a, in a lot line adjustment. They didn't get monumented. Okay, so what we want to do is um, we want to we still want to label those, but we're just going to give it a PC number. Okay, and I need to figure out what they are, but we're just going to say PC zero zero zero, no monument of record. Okay, and that's all we do for those. Except I shouldn't put a hard break in there like that. Let me do this. Okay.
So we're going to have those at all these corners. Okay, sometimes you got to make an adjustment like this. Get that to fit. I'll move this down a little. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we are going to have some corners here that just there was no monument ever set. I still label them. Still like to label them. I have to go in and update all these numbers, but. Okay, so we're just going to work our way around the boundary and get all these monument labels in. So I'll try and do that, and then I'll give you guys another look when we have all the uh, monument labels in. And then we're just about done. After that, uh, the last thing we have to do is add the adjoiner labels. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching.